whatever day you're in, whatever state, country, today's a beautiful day. My name is Mo, and I'm here to explain to you how to draw a shear and moment diagram based on this problem. Before I start, I want you to actually look into this circle, and I promise you this will be in your formula sheet after we solve this problem. Uh, the letters, you have positive, decreasing, negative, increasing. Here you have negative, decreasing, and then on this side, you have positive increasing. I will explain this later once we continue on with the problem. When you look at a problem just like that, the first thing you need to look at is the type of connections. The connections that I have here at point A, I have a pin connection, and then at point B, I have a roller connection. If you go back into your uh, statics 101, you know for a fact that if you have a pin connection, there's a possibility of having a reaction forces in the y direction or in the x direction as well where if you have a roller connection, you have really just a, a force acting in the y direction. Okay, well, after explaining this right here, so you automatically know, the first thing you want to do is you want to look into this and you want to draw this free body diagram. First thing you want to start out with is your beam. We'll do here, we'll say A, and we'll do point B. Okay? Well, we, just by looking at that, we automatically know that there is no x, uh, there are no forces acting in the x-axis. So what I will do here, I will say that I have a, a reaction force. I'm going to call it AY. And then I know I have another reaction force acting on B. I'm going to call it BY. Before I continue on, which I forgot to uh, actually put, before you start your uh, free body diagram, you need to actually specify your coordinate system and what direction you're going to. In this case, I'm going to say that anything to the right is X positive, anything up is Y positive. Okay, so now we know that AY is in the positive direction, BY is heading in the positive direction. So we know that out of this distributed load, we have a resultant force. What is our resultant force? This is where you have to consider now. You have to look at your distributed load uh, shape. In our case, we have a triangle. So really, the resulting force for a distributed load of a triangle shape is really just the area. What's the area of a triangle? One half base time height. What is our base? Nine. What's our height? Six. You do the math, nine times 54, divided by that, and you get 27 kilonewtons. Our area now is going to be, don't freak out, I change it to FR, basically the resultant force. So I know for a fact I have a resultant force somewhere, I don't know the distance right now, but I know it's somewhere in here. So I will just draw this line. Keep in mind this is not centered, and I'm going to call this the resultant force, which is 27 kilonewtons. Now I have the, I solve for the resultant force, now I can actually go ahead and proceed to the next step and solve for the reaction forces. Start with this, we'll start with the basic summation of forces in the x direction or in the y direction. In this case, we don't have anything in the x, so I will start with the y. Summation in the forces of, the, uh, sorry about that. Summation of forces in y equals zero. And I wanna specify anything up is positive. Since it's static, it will equal zero. We'll start out with AY. We have AY plus BY minus 27 kilonewtons equals zero. And now we're running into a problem because we can't really solve for AY or BY because we have two unknowns, one equation. And that means we have to come up with another equation to solve, to have two equations, two unknowns, and then you can solve. Uh, another equation we can think of is uh, moment. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pick this point, point A, and I want to say, okay, the moment at point A equals zero since it's statics. So we'll do summation, moment at A equals zero. Now you have to specify the rotation. Basically for me, I want to say that anything clockwise is positive. So any forces that is going to push this beam counterclockwise is going to be considered as negative. 
or the moment will be negative. So let's start out, so we know since we're doing the moment at point A, anything acting at point A doesn't count, anything beyond point A will count. So let's start out with the resultant, since it's now pointing down, which is going to push the beam, basically if you look at it like clockwise, we know for a fact is it's going to be positive, based on the indication right here. So 27 kilonewtons times D, which is a distance that we don't know just yet, minus, since this is going to actually go counterclockwise, by times the distance, which we know, 9 millimeters. 9 meters, sorry, equals 0. So we're almost there. However, now we have another variable that we need to solve for, which is D. We need to know what this distance is. This is where you've got to go back into this distributed load and you need to look at the exact shape. This is not a rectangular or a square. If it was a square or a rectangle, we know that the distance would be in the middle. The resulting force, the maximum force, is always acting in the middle. Here, the middle section of this triangle, since so it's not even, it's somewhere in here, which is a given formula. Um, the equation is, I don't know if you can see this, I'll put it right here. The equation is, let's say D, which is the distance we're trying to solve for, is 2 over 3 times x. In this case, our x will be the total distance of this distributed load. Since now we have this distributed load connecting from point A to all the way to point B, our x will be 9. So now if you solve this, 2 over 3 times 9, 9 times 2, 18, 1 over 3, okay your D will be 6 meters. So I know that now D is 6 meters. So I can go back into this moment equation and I will say, okay, 27 kilonewtons times 6 minus BY times 9 equals 0. Now you can solve for BY, you do the math, and your BY will be 18 kilonewtons. What this tells me, based on my indication saying that anything in the up direction is positive, anything clockwise is positive, since I have a positive answer, means that my free body diagram indicating that BY is actually pushing up is correct. If this would have been a negative, I would automatically change this pointing downward. I hope I didn't confuse anybody with this right here. So now we have BY, now we can go back into the first equation and solve for AY. Once you do that, your AY will be, oh, what would it be right here? Okay, and you're looking at 9 kilonewtons.